don't go buy milk and bread that you don't need because milk sandwiches are not going to get you through the storm. <laughs> What do you think, Titus? What do you think this precipitation is going to bring us, huh? What do you think it's going to be, right? Let's know. He says, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to stay in my shelter the whole time. Or maybe I'll just lay in it because I'm a dog that likes it cold. All right, so we are dealing with some serious winter weather that is coming our way in Georgia. Georgia is not the kind of state that's prepared for snow and ice accumulation on the roads. We don't have the infrastructure for it because it's such a rare thing that happens here that we don't have the big salt trucks and snow plows that some of the northern states have. So there's a lot more risk involved with us getting an ice storm than in other states and areas of the country. Winter Storm Izzy 2022 is headed our way this weekend. It should be here tonight and in all day tomorrow. We're expecting rain, ice, snow. Really, all the models are showing something different and nobody really knows what to expect. But there is a very high probability of the ice being the most common thing that we experience. And that can be really bad news for the homestead and the state of Georgia. So we have to get prepared to make sure that our homestead and family and property are all safe from the coming storm. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but Peaches, Bill, and Bowser, and Peter Pepper are all snuggled together in the buck shelter. Some things that we want to take into consideration with the animals is to make sure that they have proper food, water, and shelter. So for the water, what we do is we fill up every trough that we have on the property. We also fill up every five gallon bucket we can find with water. That way, if there is a power loss, which is very likely in these ice storms, we will still have water to give the animals. And we also need to prep for water for ourselves. <laughs> Miss Piggy and her three gilts are nice and warm inside their shelter. They've got a solid roof somewhat partially solid walls and lots of nice bedding. We will be adding an extra layer of straw for tonight's weather as well. For their food, we always give lots of extra hay for them to eat when it's gonna be cold or bad weather in general, where they're gonna to wanna to stay in their shelters for the majority of the day and not be out browsing. We need extra hay. We also usually give extra grain in the evenings to help them stay warm through the night. And that goes for all the animals, cows, goats, pigs, poultry. They all need just a little extra boost to warm them up as they burn through those calories. Titus, yes. Oh. Good pupper. Titus has got his shelter. He's got the solid roof. I'm going to tarp over this part of it so he can get in out of the weather. But he's, so he's a good dog. Yes, he's a good boy. Khaleesi has her doghouse here and she most of the time goes under the barn where she likes it the best. We just recently acquired this dog house. She does not want to go in it, so I'm going to try giving it to Titus. And if he doesn't like it, then I'm going to give it to the guinea hogs. But they have all this lush spring growth that is just incredibly healthy and vibrant right now. And I'm hoping that the ice doesn't kill too much of it. All right, Titus, what do you think? Are you going to go in there? Got a bunch of straw in that dog house. Got a bunch of straw up in that hog house. That's the one he's used to. He likes the space, I think. He seems like he's not that into this one because it's kind of small. You let us know. If you don't like it, we'll give it to the pigs. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sit on my foot. Thanks. Goofy dog. Love you, Tartar. We also make sure that their shelters are sound and secure. We evaluate each shelter to determine its strengths and weaknesses 
and make sure that if there's anything that we know is gonna cause a problem, we go ahead and repair it or improve it. Now that might look very different for people in colder climates, but we're not even gonna get below 32. So we're not as worried about a low temperature harming any animals as we are making sure that they stay dry because a wet cold animal is bad news. But if you can keep them from getting wet in the first place and make sure that they have a nice warm dry place to rest, they will be just fine in 32 degrees. So it's not so much the temperature as it is the precipitation that is a danger to our animals that we have to make sure that we are prepared for. So this is our recent change to the buck shelter. We took the small blue tarp off and covered it with a much larger tarp given extra lean-to area for other animals to take shelter that weren't going to cuddle up in here. Inside the buck shelter we have lots of hay to keep them warm and toasty and it's deep litter so it stays nice and warm. But we're going to be making some changes because the roof does not hold water correctly. It'll pool and it'll start to cave in because we just have these boards kind of haphazardly holding it up. So Ryan is at Lowe's now getting some roofing material that we're gonna replace this top with. One of the things we do is on top of the deep bedding that's been accumulating over the year that warms up at night for them and keeps them warm and cozy as they snuggle together, we also add extra hay for the ones that don't have a thick deep bedding in their shelter. We add a good amount of straw. Straw is a great insulator as it has hollow stems and that provides an extra layer of insulation. Oh yeah, that's a lot of straw to bed down in. I think they're gonna like that. What do you guys think? You can come check it out? Come on. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna eat it, huh? You silly girl. Go bed down in it. <laughs> She's like, that's not food. Okay, so something just occurred to me that could be a problem. When I was over here getting the pigs, where are we? Right in there. <laughs> you can see them shuffling around. Um, they love the straw, by the way. <laughs> but I had to unplug the electric fence so that I could climb over and put it in there. And then I went to go plug it back in and I'm like, ooh, if we lose power, this group of animals can get out. Now, once they get out, they do have some perimeter fencing, but it's mainly barbed wire, which is not gonna, you know, it's a foot off the ground. The little bigs can go right under it, no problem. And mama could go under it if she wanted to. So we are gonna have to keep an eye on things. Most likely they won't know that it's off and will be safe and they'll stay inside the fence and they won't try to get out. But if they do, then we're gonna want to lure them into the buck shelter and hope that the boar doesn't mess with them. He's the only one I'm kind of worried about. Peaches is in heat and she is a little bit moody right now. So I don't know if she would be dominant acting with Miss Piggy, but it would be the safest place for them if they do get out. But I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Cross my fingers. <laughs> we also like to make sure that all of our animals have a buddy, have a friend, somebody to snuggle up with that helps keep them warm. Right now, the way we have it set up, because Lashes keeps getting out, unfortunately, she's not gonna be able to snuggle with her mama tonight, but her mama has the best shelter on the property. So she's gonna be just fine. This is the shelter I'm the most happy with. I find that it is provides the best comfort level. And this is Friendship Shelter. The chickens also tend to go in here and sleep with her. They usually lay their eggs in the corner <laughs> there, there, but we do scoop out the poop every day, the big clumps, and uh, make sure it's a nice thick layer of hay for her to bed down on that provides warmth as well. So those are the things that we do to make sure that our animals are going to stay dry 
and warm, well fed and well watered through any of the storm issues we might face. The biggest issue that we do encounter here where we're located in Georgia, we are west of Atlanta in Carrollton area and we do often lose power in these bad types of storms. Um, there's a lot of rural areas where the power lines have trees that fall on them, causing power outages that could be widespread, meaning it might be a couple of days before we get our power back. We are crossing our fingers and hoping that that's not the case. So as far as prep goes for losing power, there's not a whole lot we can do because we don't own a generator. We don't have a wood stove. If we did, we would be making sure that we had tons of firewood inside to keep us warm but we're just gonna have to have all of our blankets ready and we're gonna have to all sleep in the same bed if we have to, if it's cold enough, but it's not likely to get that cold here. Having a generator would be ideal. We do have a few friends that aren't too far away from us that have been willing to bring us a loaner generator in the past. So if worst case scenario comes and we lose power and they don't, then hopefully we can phone a friend yes james i might be calling you <laughs> so having other friends in the homesteading community around you is an important thing because you might need to reach out to them for help with firewood or a generator or getting a roof on a shelter that's not quite stable enough for the rain that's coming ahead so reach out to those people in advance let them know that you're hoping that if you need any help that they're available and also think about the people who might be in a worse situation than you that you can help. Um, we recently offered firewood to a friend of ours that's slightly north of us that gets temperatures that are a little colder and they heat their whole house with firewood. They were running low and we offered oak firewood, but unfortunately it was too green for them to use still. Just try to do what you can to help others. Check on your neighbors, check on your elderly community. Make sure that you know that the people around you are safe and protected and that they have everything that they need to get through the storm, whether it's food, water, or warmth. Having a heat source is a good idea for your house that's a backup heat source that can keep you warm when you don't have power. We don't have that here, but we have had our heat not working in the past before we got it fixed, and it was temperatures as low as 32, and we stayed pretty warm inside, so I'm not too worried about that. But if you live in an area that's colder, I know some of our watchers are even in Canada where it's getting negative 20 degrees, then you might want to reach out and find out who lives near you that has a alternative heat source so that you can go to their house and stay warm. Extra water is extremely important during a power outage and a winter storm. So our well runs on power. So when the power goes out, we have no water source. So we are gonna be filling extra five gallon buckets with lids for our water source. We're also gonna be filling our bathtub with water so that we can flush toilet. We're also gonna be filling all of our extra food grade buckets so that we can have drinking water and water to cook with. Cooking, that's a whole nother issue. If you don't have propane or gas, stove and you only have electric then you have no way to cook so have an alternative cooking source for us it's our grill we got plenty of charcoal we'll we have food that we know that we can put on the grill and cook if we need to but having other foods that are easy to prep or don't have to be cooked is really important don't go and buy 10 packages of food that you don't need from the grocery store and end up wiping out the shelves. Don't go buy toilet paper you don't need. Don't go buy milk and bread that you don't need because milk sandwiches are not gonna get you through the store. <laughs> what you should do is get a little bit of the things that you know you will use in a couple of days time. It's only a couple of days that you won't have power if that. So don't be greedy, make sure you leave enough for others because there are people who are wiping the shelves clean and making it hard for people to actually have what they need. You also want to evaluate your property, especially around your houses or other buildings, making sure, look at the trees, evaluate any branches that are overhanging around your house and see if there's any trimming that you need to do to make sure that you're not gonna have any limbs falling on your roof. Another good step to do for people, especially in the farm, is to 
put an extra layer of mulch in the areas that are muddy or that get puddles of water so that you can have a safe area to walk across. So if you just get a couple of wheelbarrows of mulch and dump them on your pathways, it's going to save you a lot of heartache when the storm is here and you're having to go out there and take care of animals in the storm it's much easier to walk across a layer of mulch than it is a thick mud pit and we have a few of those here that we need to address <laughs> It's also good to know how you're going to keep the ice off of the water for the animals. The animals are going to want their water to be free of ice. They would prefer that you warm some up for them. If you don't lose power and you can warm up a bucket of water for your animals, it is a good idea. So have a way to break the ice and remove it from the water for the animals and do that frequently. Also, don't forget to make sure you know where your candles, lighters, and batteries are for flashlights. If you need a light source, you're going to want to know where those are before the power goes out. If you have a weather radio, make sure you have batteries for it. That's a good idea to keep on hand all of the time. Overall, just remember to be safe. Don't go out on the roads if you don't have to. And stay inside as much as you can if it's bad weather. So check on the animals frequently, but you don't have to spend a bunch of time outside. Just make sure that they can get to their water and that they have food. And for our family, we're making sure we know where a deck of cards and a few board games are so that we can have fun. If we do lose power, we won't be worried about which devices aren't working or how Netflix isn't on. We'll have each other to have fun with and we'll play some games and really have a fun family time. Having a power loss can actually be fun for a family with kids. If you make it that way, don't let them get scared or worried. Make sure you show confidence. Make sure you show confidence throughout it so that they stay feeling safe and make it fun. Make it like a picnic or camping out and just teach them different ways that they can do things without power. I hope that everybody stays safe and sound through this storm and that nobody has any damages from the ice or power loss. Make sure that you check on the community around you and make sure that your friends, family, and neighbors are all safe and warm too. So as we are out here working, trying to get everything ready for the storm, it is noticeably colder every hour that we work. The temperature is definitely dropping. We have sent the boys inside to snuggle up and watch a movie while we finish up what we have to do out here. And I'm getting a little chilly. I might have to go get some gloves. All right, that's a roof. Woo! What do you guys think? You excited? Peaches is already in there, checking it out. Peter Pepper's waiting. And here comes Lashes. She says, I'm coming in too. And we're getting all this mulch put down where it was muddy. So a nice path for easy travel. All right, Ryan is finishing up the last touches. He's putting walls on the shelter to block from the wind. Uh, I've added straw to the beds. I've, oh, I think we've done everything we can do for tonight. I've mulched areas that needed to be mulched. I filled up water buckets. Now we just have to give everybody a little extra food for the night to keep them warm and they'll get a little extra food tomorrow night to keep them warm and we should be good to go. And I did the, I didn't get it on film, but I reinforced the chicken coop shelter for them to block out some of the wind. So everybody should be good for tonight. The storm should be starting around midnight. It's gonna start out with some rain, turning over to ice probably turning over to snow after that but we really don't know even now the forecast is all over the place depending on who you talk to so wish us luck and hopefully everything will be safe and sound here on the homestead 
And remember to be storm ready and prepare as best as you can and make sure you check on your neighbors. <laughs>